everyone, this is Professor Tarabishi from the International Council for Small Business. I am the president and CEO of ICSB, and uh, I am delighted uh, to join you all here today for this our latest one of our latest webinars here. Uh, so let me officially start the webinar, and then um, we'll 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 get into business here. So um, this is part of the ICSB series here, exchange series here, and today the topic is on harmonious entrepreneurship. And so um, I'm delighted to have uh, Dr. David Kirby here with us. And I would like to actually um, introduce him formally here and we'll get into the topic here. Uh, Professor David Kirby um, uh, is from the UK academic and former ICSB vice president and director. He was a pioneer of teaching of entrepreneurship in the UK internationally and was awarded in 2006, the Queen's Award for international promotion for his research, teaching, training, and consultancy in the field from 2007 to 2017. He helped found and establish the British University in Egypt, a social enterprise intended to introduce British higher education to the country. He, here he introduced a degree of specialization in entrepreneurship and carried out research into entrepreneurship education. And I think just by creating a university in, 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 in Egypt is, is enough as an introduction here. This is just an incredible feat here. Um, Dr. Kirby, I am, we are delighted to have you here today. Um, and you and I were chatting before the, the, the session was going on was about this topic of harmonious entrepreneurship, but today marks the one year anniversary where I call it the shutdown here. So. Um, why don't we, before we get into the topic, why don't you just tell us a little bit about your thoughts about the one year that we, we passed in, in lockdown and many iterations of it, and then we'll can get into the topic. Can you hear me, Eamon? Yes, very well. Yeah. Um, well, thank you very much for the introduction. Thank you for the invitation. And, and thank you for all that ICSB is actually doing. Um, for a long time, I've been a, an enthusiastic uh, follower of uh, entrepreneurship and practitioner, um, both as an academic and, uh, and uh, as a professional, uh, helping set up new businesses and helping uh, run small and medium sized enterprises. Um, and uh, I've I felt for a long time that we, uh, as a body, have sort of neglected the whole issue of um, sustainability, and uh, in particular, the issue of people. Um, as I'll say in, in a few minutes, I was brought up in the northwest of England, in the birthplace of the chemical industry. A uh, hundred years before uh, I was brought up, um, industrial entrepreneurs had actually set up and um, it actually set up the, um, the, the chemical industry, set up factories. They'd created wealth, they created jobs. They created an industry, an industry that brought wealth to the UK, an industry that you know, founded the global chemical industry. However, at the same time, what they'd done was destroyed the environment the pollution, the atmospheric pollution, the pollution of the waterways, there was toxic waste, which was pure sulfur. So when it rained, it was sulfuric acid. When it was windy, it got on fire. So um, that you know, completely destroyed the environment. But what was even worse in my, in my view, was a hundred years after it had all started, there were still the poor housing conditions for the workers, often in sanitary housing conditions. Some of my school friends, their fathers were killed in the factories, or they were very badly maimed. And it, it occurred to me, the prime minister of the time, Harold Macmillan said, We've never had it so good. And I remember thinking to myself, well, if this is good, what was it like a hundred years ago? And so I, I think, you know, 
we, well, society as a whole has tended to neglect the, um, the damage we are doing to the environment, but also the damage that we're doing to our people. And therefore I welcome the ICSB's humane entrepreneurship approach. I think we've begun to think about the environment. We've begun to think about social issues, but we've tended to neglect people. So I, I at the outset, welcome what the ICSB is doing. Um, can I share my screen with you? Yes, and um, so in the, in, you, you can just say share screen, you, ha you have access. Right. Yeah, I don't need it, you know, it, it's uh, no, no, it, no, it's it's actually, it's very timely and we, we actually do it. It's actually really good to share it here. So if you see it in the bottom, there's some a button that says share screen. Yeah. And, and then if you click on that, if you have slides. Um, Can't get them out. Yep. Oh, there we are. Yeah. Oh. The screen's gone blank now. Yeah, it's, it's sharing. We're, we see it in a minute. Right. Yes. Let's see now. Perfect. And then if you just want to do a um, show, slideshow. There we are. Yeah. yeah. So um, a few years, few, well, 10 years ago, um, I met um, Iman El Kafas in Egypt. And um, we've retained, we've worked. I've retained a, a friendship. Um, we've, we've, um, she was for a short time with me in um, the British University in Egypt. And uh, about a year ago, a year and a half ago, we wrote a, a joint paper, which um, is yet to be published, but it, it has been accepted for publication. And then in November, in Global Entrepreneurship Week, um, I launched something called the Harmonious Entrepreneurship Society. Um, which basically is all about promoting the, the whole concept and, and developing it further. Um, uh, what it's all about is essentially recognizing that um, the planet is an ecosystem. And if it's an ecosystem, then it's got it it's got to be treated like uh, any general system thinking if you change one element in the system then it has a knock on effect on all other connected elements so this suggests to me that we cannot deal with problems individually we have to have a much more integrated and much more holistic approach to um, y y the way we deal with the sustainability problem. It's got to be based on um, systems thinking. So we've got to have a systemic approach to uh, the problem. The problem that we've had is that we've developed not just um, entrepreneurship, dealing with wealth and, and, and jobs, but we've developed um, eco-entrepreneurship, we've developed social entrepreneurship, and we've developed most recently humane entrepreneurship. And I, I don't deny that they have had a very significant impact, but we're not really dealing with the total sustainability problem, which as I say, is it's essentially a systems problem and you know, every element of the system is interconnected so therefore if you have, if you impact one it, you impact several so in 2010 the prince of wales wrote, wrote a book called harmony and in in the in the book he was dealing with the, the harmony with nature and the harmony with people and the need to uh, get balance. And he came up with this statement, which said the many environmental and social problems that now loom large on our horizon cannot be solved by carrying on with the very approach that has caused them. And this got me thinking because, you know, I, I, I went back to my childhood and we went back 160 years 
you know, to the start of the, the, the chemical industry in, in the northwest of England. The only jobs, but they destroyed the environment. And we cannot continue, you know, uh, dealing with that. We, we can solve individual problems. We can, we, through entrepreneurship, we can deal with uh, social problems. We can deal with um, uh, environmental problems. But if we solve one problem, as Popper said, you always create another because of the interconnected nature uh, uh, of the problem. So if we look to general systems thinking, we come across Ashby's law of requisite variety, and that says that only variety can absorb variety. If you've got a, an interconnected system, which is very varied, then you, know, you have to have a solution which is equally varied. You can't just solve one part of the, the, the problem. You um, have to, to solve the, the problem in its entirety. And Ashby's law says that a solution needs to be equal to or greater than the number of factors involved. So in the sustainability problem, we have environmental problems. We have um, problems related to poverty and um, uh, health and hygiene. Um, we have human problems. We have social problems. And if that is the case, then our solution to the sustainability problem has got to address all these uh, interconnected issues. So what we're looking at is creating a solution to the sustainability problem that doesn't just deal with wealth and job creation, but deals with profit, people, and the planet or the environment. So as I mentioned, we came up, um, Iman and I came up with this um, proposal, this paper um, last year. And what the paper does, it integrates economic, ecological, humane and social aspects of entrepreneurship. It says we've got to bring all of these together if we're going to deal with the sustainability problem. And it recognizes the fact that, that, this, that we're dealing with a system and the system is interconnected. And um, there's interdependability within the system. So what we're trying to do is address the sustainability ch challenge in its entirety, addressing as many as possible of the UN's 17 sustainable development goals. Um, we probably can't address all of them. Uh, and it, you know, it, 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 for instance, if we're dealing with problems on the land, we're probably not gonna be addressing the, the problems uh, in the sea. But basically what we're trying to do is produce a holistic ap approach um, and, and make entrepreneurship much more powerful than perhaps it has been in the past in addressing this problem. So it's based on the principles of systems thinking and it's based on the principles of um, harmony espoused by uh, the Prince of Wales. And we come up with a definition of um, harmonious entrepreneurship which is um, a holistic model of business based on a vision for the future that is rooted in ethical innovation that results in change and improvement in economy and society while not harming or damaging people or the environment, which is what exactly what happened um, in, in the northwest of England in the chemical industry. Preferably, it improves and replenishes um, them and, and, and leads to the development that is both long-term and sustainable. So that is our definition of what it is that we're trying to do. And we're trying to shift the emphasis 
away from profit, which uh, we've seen in, in the, this pandemic, you know, uh, certainly, you know, complaints in, in the United Kingdom, you know, that we're de depriving businesses of profit, yet at the same time, we're protecting the people. And, you know, believe me, um, <laughs> we've seen very, very major changes in the way in which pollution levels have dropped um, and the, the reduction in, in the carbon footprint. Um, but the emphasis has been on, you know, I, I, I saw um, a hotel the other day complaining that the British government was uh, looking down the economy and depriving them of their um, income during the um, period of Easter. Um, I think it's far more important, in my view, to be concerned about the people and the welfare of the population than it is about profit. So uh, this is what we are attempting to do. Interestingly, we launched this in November um, 2020 during Global Entrepreneurship Week. And in January um, 2021, the Prince of Wales at the One Planet Summit launched something called the Terra Carta. And this is a charter that brings in the uh, private sector. It um, embraces the private sector. And the, the, the two schemes are very, very similar. Um, he recognizes the need to invigorate innovation. We all know that entrepreneurship is all about innovation. Drucker said, you know, it's the specific tool of the entrepreneur. Uh, he recognizes that the planet is an ecosystem. That is exactly what we're saying, and that we have to deal with um, the interconnected elements in, in the system. He observes that there's a need for a skilled workforce. We uh, intend to ensure that we, we, as educators, we continue to educate our young people in how to set up not only entrepreneurial businesses, but entrepreneurial businesses that will in fact uh, help, help and benefit uh, e economy, society and the environment. Um, he advocates a new business model that involves nature, planet, people and, and profitability which is what we were, we were talking about, environment, people, planet, and profitability. And he stresses the importance of local. And certainly we believe in um, local solutions to local problems that can then be scaled up to uh, address global issues. The two additional things that we do is we uh, define harmonious entrepreneurship, um, the, the prince doesn't actually come up with a solution to the problem. It just says what needs to be done. And um, we also suggest that whatever um, enterprises are developed, they should uh, adopt um, what Iman calls uh, the prosper um, uh, approach. So Without any more ado, I'll pass over, if I may, to Iman. Um, thank you very much. Yes, we have uh, our next uh, keynote presenter here for the for the webinar is um, Iman. Iman, um, do, would you like to stop these slides and start your own slides? You're on mute. Uh, we have made the slides together, so I'll just uh, continue on what uh, Professor Kirby has just presented. So, uh, can I, can this I, is the shared can presentation. I, can Great. I just so, say, so David, I just say yeah, that so, I, met, I met Iman when uh, she was helping um, set up a university for Seacom Holding. Um, and, you know, we're now going to talk about Seacom and about. Uh, what they were doing, because that was the inspiration uh, for our thinking. 
Um, very good. So I think if you just continue with the slides, if uh, uh, Professor Kirby, if you just can move them forward as Iman suggests, we'll, let's continue. Iman, the floor is yours. Yeah, well, thank you very much. I'm happy to be with you today, as a matter of fact. Uh, thank you, Dr. Tarabishi, and thank you, Professor Kirby, for uh, in uh, including me. Uh, and I mean, I, I would just uh, add to what Dr. Kirby has mentioned, Professor Kirby, that we met, I think, more than 10 years ago. This was a long time ago when we were both working in Egypt in development and in education. And um, you know, our interest in entrepreneurship development, in youth development, and uh, women enterprise development joined us together uh, to work with the BUE, the British University of Egypt. I was working at the American University in Cairo at the time, uh, doing student development and student scholarships, which uh, inspired my thinking of PROSPER that I will go through uh, right now. And also we work together with Sekhem uh, University, like the, now they call it Heliopolis University in establishing a university that is for entrepreneurs of uh, the region, as a matter of fact, and um, the core of it is sustainable entrepreneurship, as again, I will, I will mention uh, right now, I was uh, the president of the university for a year until its establishment, and then I had actually to uh, step down and, you know, uh, go for my international endeavors. Uh, so uh, with this, I will continue on uh, our thinking of harmonious uh, entrepreneurship. And as uh, Professor Kirby has mentioned, it's based on the three Ps, the profit, planet, and people. So it's not only profit, uh, which has proven damaging to the world. And probably right now what we are experiencing are actually results of the damage that the human beings have done to the world, caring only for profit and not for the planet, uh, nor for the people. Uh, so um, we, the harmonious entrepreneurship, like other actually um, current uh, initiatives in improving entrepreneurship, uh, cares for the economy, the so society, the ecology, and the human beings. Um, comparable again and complementary to the concept uh, of. Uh, your own organization on humane uh, entrepreneurship, which cares for the uh, human within the organization and uh, their development and their uh, satisfaction. Uh, but uh, again, this has more of an economic, social and ecological aspects. Um, the concept of prosper, which I will go through, which I consider one of the core uh, of this thinking, uh, has actually um, I've, I've developed it during uh, what Dr. Kirby referred to as my responsibility for uh, a program of student development, student leadership development of the American University in Cairo that I designed and managed uh, between 2004 and 2007. And it catered for uh, students from different provinces of Egypt and now has been expanded actually to include uh, students from the region. So PROSPER, like the harmonious entrepreneurship, caters for uh, the, 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 the holistic development of the youth entrepreneur. Uh, pros, the PRO is professional. Uh, so the professional development includes, of course, what we give in universities, what we offer in academic um, the development of the student through entrepreneurship courses. But then we supplement that with the S in PROSPER. PRO is professional, S is spiritual development. And in this, we, you know, there are 12 elements of spiritual development. We coined only uh, the one that relates to connectedness to the environment and connectedness to the people, to work for the best of humanity and to think that we are all one again. So if one of us actually in the universe makes uh, something that, that hurts um, the universe, it hurts all of us, including the uh, human being that started it. So this, uh, the the spiritual development was through connecting our students uh, at the time and the youth after that, because this has been applied to in, diff in different youth um, platforms uh, through crafts, through drama, through dancing, through uh, different arts, actually, that connect the student entrepreneur into the other aspect of uh, their minds, their beings, and uh, their soul and the universe. Uh, the physical development catered for uh, their physical development through um, through 
uh, sports, through good nutrition, we do think actually that there is a, a there is a link between good nutrition and entrepreneurial behavior. And I personally do not uh, think that from from also working with my students that entrepreneurs who are uh, who suffer malnutrition, uh, who are not in good health, who are not um, you know um, integrated in in sports, for example, uh, would have the mental um, enough mental and intellectual development to, uh, to, to be successful entrepreneurs. So physical development is very important. And that's the, the other uh, P in prosper. And then the E is emotional development. And I think, and what I applied was to connect the young people to uh, their society through community development, community service, uh, developing their love feeling, their connectedness, their affiliation. And that's very important for, uh, for again, uh, the entrepreneurial development. And the, the last R is rational and intellectual development through reasoning, through strate uh, strategizing, through analysis and uh, synthesis and linking research to application and going from the one discipline to uh, the multidisciplinary, the interdisciplinary uh, and the uh, again, uh, you know, connected all the threads together. Uh, so we applied that and we applied this successfully. And I took this uh, through the program, through my lectures after that internationally, and then integrated it into the harmonious uh, entrepreneurship uh, thinking and into another uh, um, concept uh, that I work on, which is transformational learning and having, uh, having uh, education or learning without walls, a university open, uh, to the environment and um, the young people in the universities going out and working out and the entrepreneurs of the outside world working with the students in developing them uh, to what they should be. So it's again, it's a holistic approach. Uh, I wouldn't want to take more of, of the time, but uh, it's all integrated to develop uh, the human being mainly. Um, with the profit, the planet, uh, but also with big focus on the people. And that's what we mean by harmonious entrepreneurship. Um, Dr. Kirby talked about uh, SECAM uh, as, and we can move to the screen. We have a screen on SECAM, I think, uh, but mainly SECAM is um, an initiative of an Egyptian uh, educated in Germany, Dr. Ibrahim Abulaish. Uh, he passed away a few years ago, but um, he started it in 1977, uh, went back to Egypt and decided to uh, change the desert mainly and create uh, a community, uh, a sustainable community. And he was the first, one of the first who mentioned sustainability in 1977. Uh, he started a business, but also a foundation and um, included uh, the people who are in the community in working in the business. The business now has five companies, all catering for organic agriculture, organic products. I mean, you definitely can uh, Google them in order for me not to go again in more details on uh, secum.com. Uh, and uh, they have organic um, vegetables and I mean pro products. They have uh, um, medicine uh, manufacturers on from natural medicines. They have organic textiles. I mean, it's a big business, uh, but also based on using the people in the community as um, you know, uh, the workforce of all the five businesses and establishing different levels of schooling for the community to develop their own youth, you know, who would work as entrepreneurs in uh, their companies after that. Uh, so there is a foundation, there is an institute of research in organic agriculture, uh, different schools, primary, preparatory and secondary school for the disabled and also school uh, for uh, preparing a technical uh, and vocational training for those who would work in their businesses after that. And now there is a university, Heliopolis University that we talked about and all, uh, it's a green university uh, using, um, uh, again, renewable energy and uh, all the, the uh, programs there, like in the engineering, the business, the physical therapy, organic agriculture and pharmacy, they are all based on like energy engineering, mechatronics and green architecture, uh, a holistic approach towards uh, physical therapy, bi biochemistry and biotechnology in agriculture. 
and pharmacy. Uh, so uh, this is again an example that we are mentioning here and we put in our publication of an entrepreneur who has changed completely and people who have visited uh, changed the environment, the community, the environment and made the link uh, as integrated harmonious entrepreneurship again. So with this, uh, we end our presentation. Uh, I leave the floor to, to Dr. Tabish and Dr. Kirby, and we are here to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you. Uh, I, I thank you very this, much. I think this thing, uh, Eamon, is that, you know, in that case study in Seekham, you can identify not only in Ibrahim Abelage the Prosper uh, characteristics, but you can see exactly what he's, attempting to do, develop the person, the, develop the organization in a, a holistic uh, way. And, um, you know, we, if you look at the, um, if you look at the, uh, what he's achieved, he's achieved, you know, met many of the um, SDGs of the United Nations. So we're, we're looking at um, uh, an organization, which for me, is the, the, the model for the, the way forward. And um, it, it did actually win uh, the Right no uh, Livelihood Award, which is the alternative Nobel Prize um, for uh, its achievements in, in as early as 2003. So this is, this is what we're attempting to do, produce a holistic, integrated uh, approach to entrepreneurship that addresses the sustainability problem. Um, it's, it's got, in, in our view, got to be built in as Abraham Abelesh did, build it into the um, original mission and vision uh, of the uh, organization. It's got to be monitored, it, there's got to be feedback, there's got to be a feedback loop. Uh, at the end of the day, we're not just about um, making profit, creating jobs, creating wealth. We're about benefiting the planet and certainly benefiting um, the people, the employees um, that, that work there. So I think that is all that we want to say. We're quite happy to answer questions, to enter into debate and discussion and um, you know, happy to work with anybody that finds this of interest and appeal. Yep. Well, thank you very much. This has been an exceptional um, presentation here. And let me start off with some questions here just to get it uh, go, get, get a good discussion going here. But I also invite all the participants to post their questions in the chat section and we'll follow up here. So the question that, that comes to mind here, and I think ICSB went through the same, same experience here when we introduced the, the new topic of humane entrepreneurship, is some of the questions that came back to us were, so the question is, so what's new? You know, why are you introducing a new concept? What's new about this concept and other concepts that are prevalent outside? You know, mm -hmm. and if you look at people, planet and profit, that's basically the definition of a social enterprise or social entrepreneurship, right? So that question can come up very easily saying, you know, if it's people, planet and profit, you're basically saying it's social entrepreneurship. So that's one question that comes to mind that maybe you are thinking about. And the other question is, and I'll pick that up from, uh, from the concept of entrepreneurial orientation, EO. And when COVID-11 came out with the concept of entrepreneurial orientation, they've defined it, they defined it, but yet the follow-up question is, well, how do you measure it? What, mm -hmm. is, the, what is the measure? So they yeah. eventually came up with the COVID-11 nine instrument, nine item instrument, which now is one of the most used instruments in measuring entrepreneurial orientation within a firm or in a company within a unit. Mm -hmm. So the question to you is, well, how do you measure harmonious entrepreneurship? Mm -hmm. what, are, what are the scales for it? And mm -hmm. so these, these are the same questions that we went through with humane yeah. entrepreneurship. And they're good questions, but belying these questions is, is the statement that you have made. We cannot go back. We have to move forward and we have to move forward in harmony, which is yeah. really underlying this. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm curious as to your reaction to these two questions, yeah. and then we can move forward. Yeah, the, the, the first one is the easier one to answer in my view, 
all of my experience with social enterprises, it's not about profit. It's about solving the, the problem. I used to put my MBA students into social enterprises because the social entrepreneurs that we were dealing with um, were basically um, more interested in the social problem and its resolution than they were interested in generating money. Um, I used to get called out, you know, to, to go with them to see their bank manager. And the bank manager would ask for a business plan or a cash flow forecast. They had a marketing plan. They had no idea what uh, they were. So I think, you know, social enterprise is very, very different from what we're attempting to do. We're attempting to make these businesses um, sustainable financially. We're attempting to make these businesses not just deal with um, a, a social problem, but deal with the other in interconnected problems uh, uh, as well. Um, the, the measurement problem is, is much more difficult and it's not something that you know, we have yet addressed. What we're trying to put over at the moment is, is the concept and, and get um, people, I mean, whenever I talk to my students, you know, I, I ask them to name me um, entrepreneurs. I, you know, inevitably, even in Egypt, the, the people that they came up with, you know, were um, the big, um, you know, uh, financially wealthy uh, entrepreneurs. Um, you know, they, they weren't, they were all male as well. Um, you know, they, they weren't the, the, the social entrepreneurs and they weren't the, um, Eco entrepreneurs. They were the people who made money, who created jobs and wealth. And we've got to change, in my view, we've got to change that mindset. We've got to get people thinking about more than just um, profit. And we've got to get people, you know, there's this big, big problem now about how do we change these businesses? You know, well, well yeah, we've got to address that. But We've also got to start creating businesses that don't just deal with profit, but deal with people and deal with the planet. And it's changing that mindset. How we actually um, measure the impact uh, is much more complex and much more difficult um, thing altogether. Uh, I, at the moment, want to get you know, people, young people in particular, much more aware of the issues involved in uh, our entrepreneurship and particularly you know i want i think we're getting people involved in environmental issues but it's getting people involved in the humane issues as well that is important very good iman your reaction yeah actually i i may add to that because when i consult with organizations on organizational development which i i do as i said internationally um you find there is i mean still definitely the focus is on profit and sometimes some organizations don't even want to listen to you when you talk about something else i mean organizations as we we all know are at different levels of this uh, concept of humane entrepreneurship or even social entrepreneurship or something like harmonious entrepreneurship. So in the reality of the matter is that we are still uh, far from that. The different concept, as you mentioned, Dr. Tarabishi, I mean, they're not in conflict with each other. It's different people in different situations or different like researchers like ourselves or uh, action-oriented um, uh, educationalists who have tried to, to uh, you know, to integrate together the different concepts so that they work for the SDGs. Uh, so the different concepts are not uh, in conflict, whether harmonious entrepreneurship or they complement each other or humane entrepreneurship. We all aim at, at the same thing and, and we need to work together more. Um, however, the, re the reality of the matter is different. The reality of the matter in the business is different. Even in NGOs that I consulted with that are supposed to be serving the community, the reality of the matter is also different. People are focused more on, on financial matters than on 
uh, real development. Again, to different aspects, we cannot generalize, but there is still a lot of education and that's why education and um, capacity development and cultural you know, management of change and things like that are very important in what we are talking about. Uh, again, the, the preparation of the entrepreneur themselves, you know, in, in our universities, we are still focused on the academic side. Uh, of course, we do internships, we do, you know, we send our students and we bring entrepreneurs in. But from my experience, again, we haven't covered the different elements of the prosper that I've just talked about. So where is this art and music development? You know, we, sometimes I, I know that some academics would laugh at something like that. Like students have the choice to, to do arts, but it's not part of of what they should, should study as entrepreneurs, for example, you know, why should we have them do theater, music? I mean, it's their own personal choice. But I actually think this is part of my own thinking and what I applied with my own students is that this is part of the, the human, the, the, the integrated development of the student. It does help very much an, an entrepreneur to be artistic, to be to to like some sort of arts, to be uh, play sports, as I mentioned, to eat well. But we never concern ourselves with what our students eat, for example. We we don't even talk about it. The nutrition in the cafeteria is it like you know all of this? And this is the concept again of transformational learning. We need to to change our universities to cater for the human being and the entrepreneur. I mean, entrepreneurship should not only be taught in entrepreneurship bachelor degrees or courses, but to all the students. Actually, everyone needs to be an entrepreneur because this needs to be a way of living, a way of thinking, and then we can do the rational development, the spiritual development, the, the uh, emotional development, you know, the affiliation with the community, because if you don't bring the students to be affiliated with their communities, uh, then they wouldn't serve the communities, they wouldn't care for the social and humane part when they become entrepreneurs. Uh, so that's, I mean, these bits and pieces is what we added to, to our harmonious entrepreneurship concept uh, to, to really where, where we want to make a change. That's what we are after. No, this is exceptional. Ines, Manuel, I have you here. Let me, let me pose this question to you that just came in the chat because you were talking about art. And this was exactly the thing that came up here from Catherine. She goes, the art have come into the discussion and tend to work within definitionally, definitionally flexible situations, i.e. they are not definitionally dependent. Has this influenced your thinking? I didn't get the question exactly, but uh, definitionally, so could you repeat the very last part? Yeah, and then, yeah, has this influenced your thinking when they when they have the art has expanded what is meant by harmony in, in what they're saying here? I think this is what she meant here. Well, for sure. I mean, um, as I mentioned, I applied this in 2004, 2007, and it continued with the program of leadership that uh, I designed and managed. But also after that, in, in different uh, youth um, platforms that, that I, I, I coordinated, uh, art is, is a big part. And I everyone is really encouraged, even, even us, you know, to, to practice um, some sort of art that would, and I'm sure that some of the audience uh, right now with us that uh, I, I know are like scientists who, who practice art, you know, all the time. And it is part, a big part of, of their living and it helps them being scientists. So, you know, this separation that we always had, we always, always in our history, traditional separation between disciplines, between art and, you know, uh, and, and sciences and people specialize in this or that. I mean, absolutely, this should change. We are integrated human beings. And definitely, uh, yes, I agree with the question, uh, if I understand it well, that uh, yes, art has inspired me um, personally and with my students and with all everything that I've done after that and I still do. There is a there's a college just outside Boston Olin College of Engineering. And Olin College of Engineering is linked to Babson. Uh, it teaches entrepreneurship, it teaches obviously engineering, and it teaches art. It might be fine art, it might be poetry, drama, um, but the three reinforce each other. The art develops the creativity, 
the entrepreneurship develops commercial awareness and the engineering gives the students the technical skills that you know from my experience um it is it is precisely the sort of things that we need to be developing in our young people and we need to be developing in, in our workforce i think in in um Iman's slide she said you know that the, the community at Seacombe you know had happy laughing uh, children yeah believe me you know when i was being brought up you know in my hometown there weren't many happy laughing children um we we, we um we're lucky to be alive never mind happy and laughing um and you know it, it, it's developing this holistic approach that you know it, it is vitally important everything re is reinforcing uh, each other and that is what harmony is all about uh, it's not just harmony with nature it's harmony with people um, and it's and it's harmonizing, you know, the the economic and commercial uh, activities, so that they don't destroy people and they don't destroy the environment. Yeah. Um, I have a I have a quote here from our colleagues from uh, Chile here, and I know her very well. Um, she goes, "For me, it's another way of entrepreneuring, the action of doing business, not just venture creation." maybe model creation and recreation or innovation in business models of new or established MSMEs. Harmonious entrepreneurship is a continuous process and a way of thinking about organizing one's business. Would you agree with this? For, for I'm just what I'm do just, you think? What do you think? I'm just writing a paper on, on uh, uh, um, you know, new business models and um, uh, th this is exactly what I'm saying. It's a way of thinking and it's a way of behaving. I personally am not terribly um, concerned about whether people go out and start a business. Uh, I, I, you know, Jeff Timmons, who I was very fond of, his entrepreneurship book is New Venture Creation Entrepreneurship for the 21st Century. You know, I'm much more interested in the way people think and the way be people behave, um, yeah. whether, whether they work for themselves or whether they work for other people, whether they work in the for profit sector or the not for profit sector. Um, but I, you know, I think we we need to get people that are thinking in a much more integrated uh, way. Um, woman in Sweden, um, I think it's Deborah Larson, said, you know. We, we tend to think of businesses in silos. We do that for legal reasons. We do that for mental reasons. Um, but we ought to be breaking down those barriers and, you know, um, you know, not thinking them in, in, in a silo sense, but a much more integrated and coherent sense. Which, which leads me to this, this term that has been picking up a lot. I know a colleague of mine talks about ecosystems a lot, but parallel to ecosystems, there is this term that we use in one of my classrooms here, the circular economy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. so maybe your reaction to this term of circular economy, is circular economy and harmony of the circular economy, is that where your, your thinking is? Yeah. Well, the circular economy, I mean, in this paper I'm just, just writing, I actually make, um, make reference to the circular economy and the donut economy. It's a macro level. And what we are talking about is at a much more micro level. Um, and, and you, you know, in the case studies that we've written, you, you will see elements of the circular economy where things that I, I wrote one recently on um, gla glass recycling, uh, recycling of bottles. Um, was it this week's? Um, was on uh, recycling of plastics in Kenya. Um, you know, if you if you go to Kenya, there's plastic waste all over the place, and that seeps into the uh, water courses and then seeps into the ocean. Um, you know, th that is what the circular economy is about. What we're talking about is a much more micro level, where we're actually talking about the operationalization of the circular economy. Um, yeah. So it all fits together, and, and the you know the donut economy as well. 
Yep. And Iman, this is a, a question for you, but more of a comment a reaction to you. And uh, on March 8th, and ICSB celebrated International Women's Day, right? And we had a huge event throughout the whole day here. Can you maybe tell us a little bit about the concept of um, harmonious businesses and, 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 and in relation to what's going on with, 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 uh, with gender equality? For us, it's not about gender equality anymore. It's putting women in leading positions, not about equality. I think we passed that stage. What's your reaction to this? Well, what, one of the SDGs is, is uh, equality. Uh, so what we're looking for is businesses that will address equality issues, whether they're racial equality or gender equality, whether they're to do with um, age, um, but it's addressing the whole issue of e equality. Um, and, uh, you know, <laughs> I have to say, I came from a, a very um, industrial part of the country. Uh, it's giving people, no matter where they are, whether they're male, female, black or white, um, the opportunity. And, and that's what I think entrepreneurship is about. I think it's about giving people the opportunity, them taking ownership of their own destiny, um, taking responsibility for what... Um, they, they want to achieve in life. Yep. Um, and it is, it, I, I used to write, uh, give a lecture on, we can no longer rely upon they. Whether they is the, the multinational companies, whether they's the wealthy countries of the world, whether they's the government, whether they in fact is, is our own family. We've got to take responsibility and ownership uh, yep. uh, for ourselves. Yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, so Iman, definitely. Iman, definitely I see, um, yeah. If I if I may add to that, um, and not because I mean I shouldn't be I mean uh, seen as as a female answering here about uh, how is this with uh, celebrating Women's Day or Women's Month? Actually, we are still there for the Women's Month and um, the gender issue, but. Um, I can give an example of two, actually, two communities that I know uh, think uh, in a harmonious, integrated, holistic way. Farmers and women. If we look at farmers, a farmer actually sees the problem as a holistic thing, like they have an issue. They do not, they do not divide their problem. And they, when they think of a solution, they think of a solution that helps, you know, their agriculture, but also the land, but the environment, you know, their market ability uh, and, and all of that. So when we have a problem, and, and because I consulted with uh, agriculture organizations, when we go to uh, the field to advise, supposedly we think we, we would advise a farmer uh, on increasing productivity or whatever. So you, you have... In order to address the problem, you have at least eight to 10 scientists, one in water, one in soil, one in legume, you know, one in marketing, one in um, environmental assessment to do the role of the farmer who is one person doing everything and their mind actually think of all these aspects where you need 10 specialized scientists because we separate our disciplines in education to go and consult with them. And still the 10 scientists cannot get the holistic view of the farmer. And I've seen it personally on the field. This same way and this same thinking of the farmer is what we are trying to have everyone. We want everyone to be a farmer. In the same way, we want everyone. And going to your question, Dr. Ravishi, about women, we want, you know, I, I don't want to say we want everyone to be a, not a woman, but to think in the same way a mother would think at home. And, and this has been, has been taken by the woman from home to every organization that a woman has managed, you know, and, they are, and, and even leaders in everywhere. It's the same way. They always say women can multitask. And this multitasking is integrated thinking. They can do so many things at the same time because their, their brain works in networks. I mean, there are theories about that. I'm, I don't look, 
I don't want to look as if I am, I'm, you know, defending women here or anything, but there are theories about uh, how the brain works. Uh, so this ability to do network of everything, to see the family as a whole, as an integrated whole. So you care for the health, you care for the education, you care for the income, you care for the expenses, all at one thing. So this is an institution which we do not do in our business. What we want to do in our business is to think in the same way, to think of the health of the people, of the environment, of the income, of the expenditure, of the profit, of the well-being. So this is exactly what we are thinking of. And I hope I, I had answered your question. Uh, I, absolutely. That's why we use the term in ICSB, the ICSB family. So we, we're, we're in conjunction. Uh, this question is for Dr. Kirby here, but I'm going to come back to you here. This is coming from Hassam Badrawi. He goes, um, prioritization... Uh -huh. um, Yep, he, this is a good question here. So he goes, prioritization in corporate structures is important. So he's now getting to business here. Let's just prioritize corporate structures. And his question is here, I hear you and believe in harmonization between the different perspectives of intrapreneurship. So he added the concept of intrapreneurship. But here comes the question. But what can you advise about balancing the desire between wealth creation and other human, social, and environmental concepts. And Dr. Hassan Badrawi is the chair of the Badrawi Foundation for Education and Development. So thank you very much for being with us. This is an exceptional question. Dr. Kirby, I leave it with you and I'm gonna come back to Iman about this answer here as well. Well, thank you very much, Eamon, for that. Uh, the um, a typ typical Hassan uh, question. Um, I, I think it, it, it's very difficult. I, you know, I was just saying I was writing a paper today about uh, precisely about this issue that we ha we're having to change mindsets. The whole the whole um, concept of um, a, a business has been prefaced on profitability. About I remember having an argument with um, a director of a big, as it happened, chemical company in Britain. And saying I, I thought they'd been irresponsible, and he, his argument was no, our responsibility is to our shareholders. Yeah, you know we have to we have to meet, you know, the, satisfy our shareholders. The fact that they destroyed the environment didn't seem to to matter. So we've got to change the mindset of people. We've got to, you know, get them to understand why this is important that it's not just a case of um, making profit and satisfying the shareholders, that it, it, it is about having responsibility for the, the people. And I've seen your work on humane entrepreneurship, um, that you will get more out of people if instead of um, bullying them, you, you care for them and you cherish them and you, you nurture them and you support them. And defend them when necessary, that uh, and and certainly reward them. Um, that you will you will get probably more business and more custom increasingly uh, if you care and are seen to be caring for the environment and not simply greenwashing. Um, and that will contribute to your bottom line. Um, but you know it it won't happen overnight and it won't happen. Uh, in, in necessarily in, in the short term. It will require concerted, collaborative effort. Yeah, uh, thank you. Iman, your reaction to this? I think you know him, so I'm going to let you let you ad address him here and go for it. <laughs> well, I know him. It's a history. I mean, for more than 20 years, I would say. Uh, in Arabic, we say, so he's, he's a, he has been there for everything that we have fought for together, and Dr. Kirby was there too in Egypt. And um, Dr. Badawi continues to fight. Uh, we are in different platforms, but we, we play different roles. Uh, yes, of course. And he, he himself has done a lot of work in this respect. I mean, definitely as a business person, as a politician, as a scientist, uh, as an artist, he's quite an integrated person, you know, one, one of the people that we are trying to develop. Uh, so a good model of, uh, of human development. Uh, but definitely, I would say, and I would agree with Dr. Kirby with what he had mentioned, but uh, for sure, education. I mean, we, we, if we have lost something with, with the current generation, we are not giving up, okay? We are continuing through media, through, you know, through webinars, through working 
within organizations, like when I consult and go down to organizations and, 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 and talk about restructuring uh, the organization, about uh, a learning organization, developing a learning organization, that's the concept actually that we are trying to, uh, you know, to, uh, to establish in different organizations and where everyone participates in, in the learning and the decision making, you are continuously open to the environment, you, you are adapting to your environment, you know, the management of change. So this is happening currently with the current organizations with a lot of resistance, but also how to manage resistance for change, because what we are trying to introduce is, is change mainly of the different profit making, you know, 100 thousand percent concept of, of profit making so this is change so change has rules of overcoming change you know and overcoming resistance to change so you apply that too so you change the informal organization within an organization that makes you know the network that the 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 web that makes the decision informally but you also change the structure of the organization as dr um, badrawi mentioned you know to to make the boards more diverse uh, to open up to different representation in the board, to make the management more diverse, uh, to re-strategize the organization and make sure that uh, the environment is a big element in the organization. There is also, of course, the, um, the reward and punishment. And, you know, this can happen within the organization, but also can be government policies to reward and punish those who are more... Um, the entrepreneurs who are more harmonious actually with the environment with the people you know with the planet and all of that so these are current solutions to current problems but the most important is education and we really really should develop our students or support them develop into the integrated human being when we have an integrated human being we will have an integrated harmonious holistic uh, organization and organizations make our society okay so when you start at the individual level you go to the group level you go to the organization level you go to the regional global level with harmonious uh, entrepreneurship so that's education 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 thank, thank you very much i'm going to share a secret with you all here and then i'll leave it to, um, to david to close it here and when i first started my academic career and um, my first publication and was an invitation from the MIT Journal uh, to, to write a piece on Seekem. Oh, that, was, that, 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 that is my first actual official publication was <laughs> I wrote a case on Seekem and why it was different in other corporations. So Seekem has, has followed me throughout my career. And even till today, when I, as soon as you mentioned Seekem, <laughs> in my mind, I'm saying, here, here I am back 25 years ago when I was sitting there writing about Seekem and, and Helmi and all the stuff that was going on and all the turbulations and the challenges, yet with his vision, he has really transformed and he's done really well for Egypt. So this is, for me, it's karma, but it's also a nice touch, as I mentioned to you, the, the Professor Kirby, today marks, I think marks our one year anniversary of the shutdown. And I think this webinar today and the timing of it and everything, I think the word harmony is something that the world needs. Right, and, 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 and I, I applaud you both for bringing this topic to us. ICSB is your home for this topic. So I know we will do more and more on this, but David, you've been with ICSB for a long period of time. So I think I'll leave it to you to close the webinar with some stage wisdom here and, 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 and a call to the world. And we can use that as part of our summary. Well, th thank you, Eamon, you know, once again for the invitation and um, for you know, promoting this to your membership and, and more widely. Um, and as you mentioned, I've been with ICSB for a very long time. Um, not, not so much recently, but, you know, at one stage I was flying over to America, you know, <laughs> pretty, pretty frequently, um, you know, leaving a carbon footprint <laughs> on, on the way. Um, but, um, you know, I'm, I'm, as you know, I mean, I'm, I'm um, you know, an ardent supporter of what what you're doing, and certainly an ardent supporter of what you're you're doing now with humane uh, entrepreneurship. Sikum and uh, Ibrahim Abalash very much impressed me uh, with, with what they were doing, uh, and the holistic way in which he was en envisaging this, uh, not just as a commercial operation, but developing a community and changing uh, the the way business was conducted. The sad thing is 
Ibrahim Abalesh was a very humble person. And he, he wasn't um, somebody who would uh, you know, stand on the rooftop and announce what he was doing. The actions speak louder than words in, in his case. Sadly, whenever I talked to my students in Egypt about him, they didn't know of him. They knew of the, as I say, they knew of the, um, you know, uh, the, the main wealth creating entrepreneurs, but not of him. And Leonard Iskander was the same. Um, yeah. I basically believe that this is the way forward. Um, I think we've got to sensitize, particularly young people. Um, we, I think we've, as they, um, uh, we've, we've got a bigger job dealing with existing enterprises. But um, as I used to say to my students, n n nothing um, worthwhile is ever easy. Yeah. And I think, you know, with the, with the power of something like ICSB, we can start to change the world. Thank you for the opportunity. And, um, you know, I wish ICSB and Humane Entrepreneurship every success. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Kirby. Iman, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank this you. Is, this is, I believe, is the first of many. As I mentioned, this is a home here, so please, we will probably take this offline and continue to um, be creative and innovative and artistic on how to approach this. But I see really this goes hand in hand with the mission and vision of ICSB. We are the platform for, for ideas like this. And I think in the world, an organization like ICSB's mission and, and ideals based on Dr. Kirby's work in the past and other giants in the field here, we need to move this forward here. So I want to applaud you all on behalf of Ahmed Osman, the chair of ICSB and the entire ICSB board. They send their regards. regards. We will be in touch again and more to come. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank, thank you. you so much thank and you. thank you for everyone who has participated. Really appreciate it. Thank you. And, and anybody that wants to get in touch, please do so. We, we will share this with everybody and we'll do all the follow up. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Keep safe. Thank you, you too. Bye.